Okay, here is the lobster and crab, you guys, that I get from Costco. Um, these are the crab right here. This is what it looks like. They're in the frozen section. The crab is pre-cooked. They're already cooked. They just come frozen. And there's my little kitty. But this is how they are $219.90 for, I think, 12 12 crab legs. I think maybe it'd be, sometimes it's 12 or 13, just depends. But yeah, they're fully cooked. And that's that for the crab. Hey, you wanna say hi, kitty? <coughs> say hi. <laughs> and then here's the lobster tails, you guys. I normally, okay, this is a big bo ass box of lobster tails. Normally I get the smaller box, but they didn't have it this time. This is the only box they had, so I got this. And there are 40 lobster tails in here. 40 for $229.99. So that's that. So that's what they look like. There are the lobster tails and the crab legs. This is what the inside of the box looks like. Um, yeah. See, there's five um, lobster tails per row, and there's two stacks. So like 15. Yeah, 15 are already gone. And then there's, you know, more back there, but that's how they come. There they are. Yeah. Look at her. She's going nuts. Can I help you, ma'am? Huh? Hey. Kitty. Those are mine. Back off, sister. Get your paws off that counter, girl. And then here's the crab legs that come in that big plastic box. Ta -da. I already took, um, I just opened this box, this is a brand new box, but I already took uh, six out, so. Yeah. They're huge and beautiful. Already cooked, you just gotta defrost them. So yeah, see, that's, that's it. She's just like her mama, eating king crab. These are the couple of pieces that fell on the floor while I was cracking the crab legs. <laughs> Jackpot. Kitty. Is that good, kitty? Hi, mama. Doing a mukbang too, people. They're spoiled eating king crab. Spoiled. Hi everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. And today I'm gonna to show you how I do my seafood because everybody's asking, how do you fry your seafood? so delectably and perfectly. Well, I really don't do it perfectly, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. So, come along with me. Right here are the lobster tails and the shrimp. They're in a bowl. They just I just got them out of the fridge. They're chilling. And we're about to fry up these bad boys. And so what I use is Panko breadcrumbs, just the plain Japanese style. There's no flavor to them because um, the seafood butter sauce is so rich and thick and full of flavor and very salty. So I don't season my breadcrumbs at all or my flour. I just do it as is. So um, first it goes in the flour, then it goes in the egg, then it goes in the panko and into the deep fryer. Okay, you guys, I have my setup here. My deep fryer is on. It's on 365. And I got my flour here, my egg here, and my breadcrumbs here. So I'm going to dip, 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 place them in the trays, and we're gonna fry these bitches up. So going with the lobster tail, 
and my hands are very clean. I just washed them. Flour. You want a very light coating of flour. You don't want it too thick. Then in the egg. My husband's cracking up and <laughs> cracking one open. Then in the panko. My hubby just got home from work, so and my kids are coming home from school, so there's gonna be background people. And this is just how um, I do my seafood. And I, uh, like I said, the bread, oh my God, I can't even talk. The breadcrumbs are not seasoned at all. Neither is the flour. So it should look like this. There we go. Place one into the tray. It's not supposed to be going yet. The hell? <laughs> I put too much oil in it. <laughs> okay. Stop. My husband's laughing at me. And my son's singing in the background. <laughs> So you don't want to overfill your uh, little pan here because then the seafood will not, or any kind of food actually will not cook evenly if it's overcrowded. So I'm just gonna put two at a time in here. And like so. And that's how they look. All right, now I'm gonna drop them in for exactly two minutes and 30 seconds. Got my timer going. I'll show you. I put a little too much oil, <laughs> you know. You gotta make some kind of mistake in a kitchen, otherwise you're not a cook. But yeah, a little less oil next time. But yeah, so two minutes, 30 seconds, the timer's going. Come back over here. Wash my hands. We have a minute and 20 seconds left. And that's the key to seafood. You do not want to overcook it because your seafood gonna taste like shit. And it's gonna be disgusting. Rubbery seafood is the worst. I love my deep fryer. It's a double deep fryer. Yeah. I got this deep fryer um, from Amazon. I freaking love it. It's amazing. So, 30 seconds. And you'll see how golden brown and delicious they're going to be. So 
sorry. <laughs> so, here they are, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Since I put too much oil, I can't set it up here because it'll keep cooking. But that's it. Golden brown. Delicious. So I'm going to place it here. And then... Ready for the next batch. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Let's go for two more. And the flour. Shake it off. And the egg. Let it drip off and the bread crumbs. Second one goes in there. Now we're gonna drop four. Two minutes, 30 seconds. I'm gonna go wash my hands. You're going? Mm -hmm. All right, love you. Love you. Love Careful. Hi. Yeah, all my kids are coming home from school, so. So for the lobster tails, I do for two minutes and 30 seconds, and for the shrimp, I do a minute and a half, and they're done. But then I'll show you how to do that too. you guys look at that beautiful okay all right there's the um, the lobster tails guys right there perfect now I'm gonna show you how I do the shrimp which basically obviously is the same thing but not for as long so here's the shrimp Okay, so this is the fourth one. All right, so then you gotta open this again. <clears throat> now we're going for a minute and a half for these shrimp. Okay, and all right, let's do drop and start. 
I wash my hands. And there's the shrimp, guys. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna continue um, with the rest of this in a bowl right here. There's two more lobster tails um, and some more shrimp. So I will show you after everything's done and then I will see you for the mukbang, people. I just got done with all the seafood, you guys. There's the lobster tails on the left, and on the right is the shrimpies. Oh my God, so delicious. Perfection. Well, not perfect, but. Cutting onions is no joke. Look at this, you guys. I'm supposed to do a mukbang. And look what it did to my freaking eyelashes. <laughs> I'm done. I try to look pretty for you guys for the mukbang. And look at my eyelashes. Whew. It's the strongest freaking mother eyelashes I've, I mean, oh my God, I can't even think. Those are the worst onions I've ever cut in my entire life. Oh my God. Whew. Look at this, you guys. This is the aftermath of those onions that accosted me. They assaulted me, guys. Look at this. Oh my God. Yeah, I have my makeup all done. I had my eyelashes on for this mukbang. But yeah, this is the result. Hi guys. Anyways, I wanna show you the sauce that I'm making. So, here is the seafood sauce I am making. Yeah. Such a mess when I cook. Okay, anyways, I'm making the sauce right now and then um, I'm done. So, yeah, and then I gotta go fix my face. Why are you mad? Fix your face. Screw you, onions. <gasps> there it is. It smells so freaking good. I cannot wait to eat this, you guys. There's the paprika, with the butter. Here it is, guys. Okay, um, what I put in here is, of course, I put eight sticks of butter. I know what you guys are thinking. Eight sticks of butter, oh my God, that's disgusting. That's like a heart attack in a pan. Oh, okay, well, like I'm gonna eat all this, uh, not. So yeah, you have to have a lot of butter because that's what makes the foundation of the sauce. And I put a ton, a freaking ton of um, onion and ginger because I am obsessed with it and I love it. And it's so fabulous on the seafood. And I didn't actually make Beloved this time. That's the, you know, it's basically her sauce, but I just used butter, ginger, onion, uh, minced garlic. I did Cajun seasoning, Old Bay seasoning, paprika, onion powder, parsley flakes, and um, Beloved showed me this when I was at her house. I put in A little, oh. I put in a little bit of Coke, about that much. So, I saw Bethany do that and she was like, don't tell anybody it's my secret. And I'm like, okay, but then I saw her do it. <laughs> she said she did it on another video of hers. So I was like, okay, well, that's fine. So yeah, I put a little bit of Coke in there. Oh, and I put some white sugar. Last time I put brown sugar and it turned the sauce an icky color brown. So I didn't really like that. So I put white sugar. And that's all I put, that's all that's in here. So, and it smells, oh my God, you guys, I can't tell you it smells so good. Who wants to join me for this seafood feast? 
here is the finished product everyone there's the lobster tails in the middle the king crab on the left and the sauce right there lobster tails king crab legs corn eggs and the shrimp Who's hungry, guys? Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. As you saw, I cooked this before you. And yes, in case you skipped forward and didn't watch the cooking portion, here is fried lobster tail. Here's fried jumbo shrimp. We got king crab legs right there. We have some eggs, some corn, and uh, butter sauce for the seafood. Like I said, it's not exactly B loves because I didn't put everything she puts in it, but I just put the main ingredients and then I put my own seasoning, so. But I told you guys what's in there, too. And then, since my last video, you guys, I ate like 92 lemon seeds. I'm going the safe way. I'm gonna do squirty, squirt lemon juice, because yeah, I actually had branches growing out of my navel. No. Thank you, Father, for this food. Bless this food and sanctify it by your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Always say your prayers. And as you can tell, look at I have no makeup on. So I threw my glasses on. <laughs> because those onions whooped my ass, everybody. God, it was terrible. All right. Um, I'm going to go for a lobster tail. Go bigger, go home. Yeah. Lobster tail in this beautiful, beautifulness. Whew. It's hot, guys. It's really, it's steaming. Can you see that? Oh my hot. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, it's really hot. I just took it off the, the stove. Dang it. Oh yeah. Dang it, I didn't open the lemon, hold on. That's beyond delicious. <clears throat> Okay, I have a story time today, but I'm gonna eat for a little bit, for a few minutes, and then I'll get into it. Cause I'm really hungry, and you know, for the, for those of you who love eating, really more than the talking, I'll do that first for you. heaven all right Did you guys see what those onions did to me? That's why I look like this. That's okay. I don't care. I don't give two craps, actually. 
they're all from me. Yeah, <laughs> I put on my, you know, lashes and everything. Hmm. Not just for the video. I was um shopping and doing some things. So, but <sighs> yeah, I retouched up my makeup when I got here. You know, it's like, oh well, I'll just leave them on. You know, for the video. Yeah, right. Those onions are no joke. Um, I'm gonna go for an egg here. I need a spoon. I'm so. I almost stick my whole freaking hand in here. It's gross. Yeah, I'm That's why. <clears throat> My, you know, revenge video, guys. Remember that one? Well, the audio, like, really, really was terrible. So, like, at the end portion of that video, I was talking about some things, but a lot of you didn't hear. I know a lot of you said, I couldn't hear the last part or the last... 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it was. So, um, after my wild, crazy, you know, after divorce, I just went wild and nuts and sleeping around different people all the time, you know, doing pot, uh, drinking every day, that time. One day I came home and I just uh, collapsed on my bathroom floor and <clears throat> I started crying, like sobbing, and my mom heard me and um, she comes running up there and she like, you know, barges through the door and she's like, what's going on? What's going on? I remember baby uh, story time number four, those feelings I had and what I, you know, felt like doing, those feelings came on me again but even worse than that period and so i was on my bathroom floor and i was thinking about it and i was just like you know crying and i just i was sick of my life i was sick of it you know i just i was thinking about my kids and everything and like you know how i was just with a different guy like you know every night and you know just i was sick of it i just couldn't take it anymore so my mom came in and I told her exactly that. I said, I, I don't want to live this way anymore. And it's just, I can't take it. Look what I'm putting my kids through. They don't even, I'm not even home with them at night when they're sleeping in bed. So. Mm. So that was the second time in my whole life that those feelings came over me the second time. Um, it was worse. So my mom said, bitch, get up. And she uh, took me to a nut hut. <laughs> okay. She didn't exactly say it in those words, but she basically said, get your ass up. And she said, uh-uh. <clears throat> so she took me to um, the hospital and had me admitted. And they marched my ass right upstairs to the uh, 10th floor, which was the nut hut, the nut ward. And I could say that because I've been there, people. Yeah. So, so I was admitted. And, um, you know, they, they said, what's the problem? And I told them I was having thoughts of that and I wanted to do it and I, I didn't wanna, you know, go on how I was anymore.
So they admitted me immediately. Um, when you go to those kind of places, <laughs> bitch, you ain't going nowhere, nowhere until they release your ass. Doesn't matter what you do or what kind of fit you throw, you're going nowhere. Not unless they release you. Um, at the time, I didn't know that. <clears throat> I was I was ready to go. I was like, yes, please go, please, please take me there. I need help. I need you know. I need something. I just hit rock bottom, and I could not take the way I was living, and I could not take the thought of being a mother of six children and living that way. You know, and <clears throat> so I was in the nut hut, you guys, in the mental ward of the hospital. Um, for two weeks so surprisingly after two weeks they they released me with a clean bill of health <sighs> they diagnosed me with anxiety depression and um split person, split person. allergy disorder no uh, get out of here okay and then um yeah that was it Anxiety, depression, and um, whatever. Okay, so <laughs> you're distracting me. Go away. <laughs> Was it a fork or a spoon? <laughs> Thanks, babe. <sighs> Why you keep stealing my shit? My fucking Superman died in that fucking tray right now. I'm trying to tell a story time. Go away. Man, let me in front of that bitch. I'll tell a story time right now. How I fucked that shit up. Mm-hmm. That's how you gotta do it with a spoon. So much better. Do you want a crap? You want a lobster tail? Take one. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Beyond delicious. Okay, so where was I? He's distracting me. I'm so sorry. I'm probably going to cut all this out. Yeah, so I got counseling while I was in there. I went with I went to group meetings. Um they really, really put life into perspective for me because I lost it. I I lost, you know, everything. My my train of thinking, um, my goals, my me being a mother, you know, it just all it was there, of course it was there, but I was checked out mentally. I was done. Good? Uh huh. Mm hmm. <clears throat> so after two weeks, I was released with a clean bill of health, and um, my mom and my brothers came and picked me up. And they, you know, they hugged me and they're like, we're so happy for you. You know, we finally got you back. And you guys, I promise you, I walked out of there. I literally walked out of there like I felt born again. I, that's the best way I can describe it. That's how I felt. I felt born again. It was the most amazing feeling on the planet. I just felt like I could breathe again. I felt normal, like a human being. And... As soon as I got home, I ran up to all my babies, my kids, and I hugged them and I just started bawling. Just started bawling. I lost it. I was like, I'm never gonna leave you again. Not that I left them, but you know, I just, um, you know, I felt, I even felt bad being away while they were sleeping in bed. I did, I felt horrible. So, <clears throat> but they thought I was working, like I said. My mom told them that I was at work. I got, you know, I got a job and I had to go away for, a couple weeks or something or a few days whatever 
But they were so little, they, they believed it, you know, they didn't understand. So that's just what they knew. But so I got a full-time job. Um, I turned my life around completely. And this is not gonna be pretty. I uh, deleted my social medias. I deleted Facebook. I deleted Instagram. I deleted Snapchat. I deleted Twitter. I changed my phone number. I told myself I'm done. I don't want my friends contacting me. I don't want old, uh, excuse my language, fuck buddies contacting me. I didn't want anything from the time that I went in there to the time I got out. I didn't want anything from my past at that moment. So I did. And I started working full time and taking care of my kids and I was home every night. And uh, yeah, working, taking care of the kids, I just completely changed everything around. There are three, the oh hell, there are three, <laughs> there are three kinds of people, I uh, no, friends in this world, okay, listen to me, there are three kinds of friends in this world, you guys, and this is the damn truth, and this is what I realized when I was in the mental, the 10th floor in the mental ward of a hospital, this is what, what hit me, what I realized, <clears throat> there's your true friends, there's your party friends, and there's acquaintances, okay? That's the three types of friends in this world. And your party friends, the ones that you mess around with, you know, get drunk with, get high with, sleep around with, party with, those are not real friends. They could give two shits less if you live or die. They just want somebody to party with. They don't give a shit what happens to you. Mentally, emotionally, physically, they don't care. Um, I literally disappeared off the face of the earth um, for those two weeks that I was in um, the mental ward. I did. My friends had no idea where I was. Um, they didn't even try to contact me, nothing. They just kept doing their thing, kept partying. Who? Oh, they never even once um, asked my parents or my, or my family or my brothers, hey, where's Kristen? Is she okay? We haven't heard from her. And you know what's going on? Nothing. They didn't care. The only people that talk, that you're able to get <clears throat> one phone call um, a day and that's it and it only lasts for like I think they give you 20 minutes 15 20 minutes one phone call per day and my brothers and my parents were the only people and my other family members you know but the only my family basically was the only ones who cared and, and called every day to talk to me so anyway and then Started working, you know, not doing nothing, changed my number, everything like that. Um, so one day I was just on the, um, I was on the couch and I was watching TV and I was bored out of my mind, right? I was off that day, I didn't work. My kids were in school. Um, I think the other two were napping and my dad was home. Um, and my mom came up to me and she's like, hey, do you want to go to Cindy's house? Which is now my mother-in-law. Okay. So I was like, 
yeah, sure, why not? I'm not doing anything. I'm bored out of my mind. And she goes, Dad will stay here with the kids, and then he'll get them from school. Let's let's go have, you know, some girl time. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm out of here. So I, like, threw the controller, and I, like, got up. So I went with her. Mm-hmm. Mm. Went over there and um, walked in and <clears throat> Cindy, my now mother-in-law, she's like, oh, Kristen, you came too. And I was like, yeah. So we had lunch together, me, her, and my mom, you know, we're just talking and, you know, girl talk and how was your day and what'd you do and you know stuff like that what's going on in your life you know and so they start you know after we all three talked they started continue to talking and i just got on my phone you know i was looking down getting on my phone and i overheard the conversation i wasn't really paying attention but i overheard it you know what i mean like bits and pieces here and there And my mother-in-law, future mother-in-law, she was telling my mom about Brandon, her son. And she was telling him, my mom about how he just recently got a divorce and he's, you know, he's very sad and that divorce really upset him and he's going through a really hard time right now. And I was like, kind of paying attention, kind of really not, you know. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that. I always knew that he existed because you know we first met when we were seven years old so I always knew but I didn't know he got divorced you know I was just like what mm. so then my um, future father-in-law walks in and he comes in from the back patio and he has a beer in his hand and he walks in he goes Kristen he goes oh it's nice to see you here I said yeah you too um, he asked my mom and his wife oh what are you hens over there cackling about you know and then Cindy goes oh we're just I'm just telling Kathy about Brandon and then Paul like looks at me and he looks at you know Cindy and he's like Oh, um, I just had a fabulous idea. And um, he goes, why don't we get Brandon and Kristen together? And I looked up at him. I started like chuckling and started like laughing, you know. And my mom and, and Cindy looked at each other and they're like, why not? Are you kidding me right now? So Cindy's like, here, I'm going to give you his number. I said, no. I said, I'm really not into dating right now because I completely said I'm not dating. I'm done. I don't want to date. I just want to focus on myself and my kids. And I, I'm that's where I was at the point of my life. I was like, mm -mm. well, she gave me the number and I was like, oh, okay. No, what changed my mind was she said, you guys are going through the same thing. Why don't you be there for each other? I'm trying to tell the story of us and you're ruining it. You do what? Hmm? You do what? I'm trying to tell a story of us and you're ruining it. Uh. <laughs> so she goes, you guys are going through the same thing. Why don't you just be friends? Why don't you give each other a shoulder to cry on? You just went through a bad divorce. So did he. I mean, just be friends. You need a friend. Everybody needs a friend. So when she put it like that, I was like, okay, yeah, okay. So I got his number. Um, me and my mom ended up leaving to go back home. 
we're talking in the car and she goes, are you going to call him? I said, hell no, I'm not calling him. I said, how embarrassing. That's so awkward. I said, I haven't seen him since I was seven. That's I'm not calling him. No. I said, if anything, I will text him. And she's like, okay, we'll text him. I said, I will give me a minute to think. Well, we got home. Mm. I won't be eating that other corn. I have all this to eat. <clears throat> I'm not going to put this. I went straight upstairs to my room. And I shut the door and I was kind of like, okay, well, what the hell am I going to say to him, you know? Um, so I text him. It took me forever to write this text because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know if I was going to sound stupid or weird or awkward. Or like, he wasn't even freaking interested, you know? It's just an awkward situation. So. <clears throat> I thought long and hard about what I was going to say. Finally, I mustered up the, the you know lady balls to send the text and the text was pretty long it wasn't a short one but i basically said something like um hey it's Kristen. do you remember me probably not ha 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 i said the last time we saw each other we were both seven years old oh and here's some back history my mom i mean sorry let me back up my dad and his dad were both enlisted in the marine corps together um him and my his dad and my dad became really good friends like best buds they did everything together so obviously their wives met and it was his mom and my mom so ever since even before me and brandon were born even before his siblings were born and my siblings were born our mothers were best friends mm. they were military wives together um His mother has two girls and one boy. My mother has one girl, two boys. So they have the same kids at the same time. We're all the same ages, opposite sex. So funny, so weird. So Brandon has two older, <clears throat> excuse me. Brandon has two older sisters. I have two older brothers. And me and him are exact same age, except I'm two months older, but you know, whatever. So that's how we first met at when we were seven years old because our families were so close. Best friends. Our moms were best friends and our dads were best friends. So that's how we first met when we were seven. But then our families moved apart. Like, uh, yeah, we moved to Texas. They stayed in California, that kind of thing. So we grew, our families kind of grew apart. They always stayed in touch. But so that's why I hadn't seen him since I was seven because we moved away to Texas. And so I, you know, going off that text, I said, you haven't seen me since I was seven. I don't even remember you, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I hear you're going through a horrible divorce. So am I. What a coincidence. I, I hate to hear that for you. I'm sorry. I said, but if you would like to talk sometime, I'm here for you. And this is my number. And I just, you know, want to say hi. There was something along the lines of, you know, I can't remember verbatim, but look at that bite. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> he texted me back. Um, he said, hey, he goes, I remember you. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I remember you. The first time I ever saw you, we were both seven, and you were swimming in the pool, and I walked up and saw you in the pool. He's like, I tried to talk to you, but you just, like, swam off. He described what I was wearing, what, what bathing suit I had on. He described the color of my eyes. He described my facial features. I was like, what the hell? I was laughing so hard, like, through the text, like, laughing my ass off. I said, are you kidding me right now? He goes, no, I remember you. 
My husband has the memory of an elephant. It's crazy. He remembered me when we were seven years old, or maybe that's just true love. I don't know. Call it what you want, but I had no clue who he was. I don't remember what I did when I was seven. I don't remember anything like that. So, yeah. So when he first said that he remembered me and he remembered the color of my eyes and everything, I was like, hold up. Like, I was so interested at that point. You know, at first it was just like, okay, this is just another person I'm texting, whatever. But... Mm. Okay. <clears throat> then we kind of went back and forth for a little bit through text. Um, but I think uh, he was at work at the time, so he's like, um, I'm kind of a little bit busy right now. He's like, but I get home at this time. Can I text you back then? I said, oh, yeah, of course. So we stopped texting. And then my mom's, you know, I went downstairs or whatever, and she's like, did you call her or contact him? I said, yeah. I said, he remembers me, mom. She goes, I had a feeling he was gonna say that. He's very intelligent. He's always been a smart kid, and, and uh, he works you know, high up there in military, so he's really smart. I was like, that's insane. I don't know what to think about that. Okay, so I gotta speed this up. Mm. when he got home from work that evening he texts me hey i'm home now you know i'm just chilling drinking a beer you know what, what are you doing and i told him oh I'm, I'm cooking dinner or something like that so then i said after i'm done cooking dinner do you mind if i call you and he goes oh of course not sure yeah so i finished cooking dinner for the kids and you know the family and then i went upstairs and i called him and I was like, I was like so nervous, like, oh, what am I going to say? This is so weird. So it's the very second I heard his voice on the phone, he's like, hello. Like, I can't even do it. His voice is so deep. You guys know. But I was like, holy shit, his voice. I thought it was so sexy. I did. I was hooked on his voice over the phone. And then when I ended up talking till like two in the morning that night. Our first conversation on the phone was like till two in the morning. And um, we started talking in May of 2014. That's when we first started talking. And um, by July of, um, 4th of July, He, was, he had a two-week release from the military. <clears throat> For Independence Day, they all have that. So he was living in South Carolina at the time, and I was living in Fort Worth. So we talked on the phone for two months straight, day in and day out, except when he was at work. But, you know, he called me on his lunch break at work. We talk. Um, as soon as he got home, he'd call me, and we'd be on the phone for hours, hours. I just clicked with him like I've never clicked with any person in my life. It was the weirdest thing. I don't, I can't explain it to you, but so then two months go by and we're, you know, we're still talking on the phone and um, I think it was like two days before he came down for 4th of July. Look at that lobster tail. Um, I went out on my trampoline in the backyard. We have a big trampoline back there and he, oh my God. I laid on the trampoline, I grabbed the phone, I was talking to him, I grabbed a bottle of wine, and I'm like, this is so romantic. I'm talking to him, laying on my trampoline on my back, looking up at the stars, listening to his sexy deep voice, and I've got you know a bottle of wine here. Life doesn't get any better. And we just clicked so well. That's why we talked for hours, we couldn't stop talking to each other. Uh, needless to say, yeah, I got drunk, I did. Talking to him, you know, I was taking sips. Mm. <laughs> Guess what happens? Oh my god. Liquid courage, people. 
I ended up telling him things that I've never told anybody. I ended up telling him things that I wanted to take to my grave. That freaking bottle of wine, I don't know what they put in it. I think it was laced with crack. But I'm telling you, I told him things that, oh, hell no. I never wanted him to know. Oh my God. And then he was still on the phone with me. I don't know, God knows how, but he was. I thought he would like, you know, hang up and say this bitch is crazy. I'm never talking to her again. But he's still on the phone with me. And um, before we even hung up, I was like, I love you. This was after two months, guys. We're talking on the phone. He's like, what? I said, I love you. I told him I loved him. And he, I guess he's like, just like laughing. <laughs> the next day, I finally ended up going to bed. The next day rolls around and we talk. Um, and he called me the next morning. And he's like, how are you? And how do you feel? And I'm like, I'm fine. He goes, your head doesn't hurt or anything? I said, no. He goes, oh, well, you got pretty on the sauce <laughs> I said no actually I don't even have a hangover nothing I said I feel fine um he's like well good good he goes um do you remember what how our conversation went and I was totally playing it off because you know I had no freaking idea I can't remember so I'm like oh yeah I know you know I was like <laughs> I'm trying to act like I knew I didn't know shit He goes, do you remember what you said to me um, before you hung up? I said, yeah. <laughs> and it was quiet. And he goes, you do? And I was like, oh, God, what the hell did I say? I was trying to play it off at first, but then he, he like, was so adamant about me remembering. So and I was like, what the hell did I say? I was like, oh, God, what did I say? I'm so sorry. What did I say? He's laughing so hard. I said I didn't because then it clicked. Like, what could he be talking about? It has to be something about, I love you. So I said I didn't. Please tell me I didn't. And he goes, yeah, you did. You told me you love me. I was like, I was too embarrassed, too humiliated at that point to say um, it was just drunk me because he's not going to want anything to do with me if I'm you know, drunk ass. So I had to play it off and I was like, I don't, I didn't remember that, but now that you said it, I do. I do remember that. And I said, I meant it too. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I had feelings for him. I really did, but I didn't want to say it like that or at that timing or anything like that over the phone, especially. So I was like, well, yeah, I meant it. But I was kind of like, oh my God, what did I do? So. 4th of July came and we we're finally going to meet in person um, for the first time since we were seven years old. So it was beyond nerve wracking. It was just, I was shaking. I was, I went to go pick him up from the airport and I was like this. I was like, I couldn't even drive. I couldn't think. My heart was racing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm finally going to meet him and see him as an adult. This is so weird. Mm. Oh my God. I pull up to the airport and we're on the phone together. Um, and I was like, I can't find you. Please don't make me go into the airport. I hate airports. I'm so confused. I don't, I get lost. He goes, no, I'll come out to you. Just, just be in the parking lot. He goes, I'll find you. Those words right there. I was like, <laughs> so hot. <laughs> I was like, okay, dang it. So I was just waiting in my car and I was like sweating bullets. I was like, what if he's not who he said he was? What if he's not the pictures he sent me? Because we sent each other pictures, of course, the two months we were talking. Not anything like that. It was just always from the waist up, you know, smiling, whatever. Or he'd send me pictures of him at the gym, you know, like, you know what I mean? It was nothing like that. But so we were both thinking, he was thinking this too, he told me. What if those aren't, aren't her in the pictures? So we were both thinking that we we're both going to get like... <laughs> totally played with 
So he comes walking out of the parking garage and he's like, I'm walking, what are you in? And I told him what car I was in and what it looked like. And then all of a sudden he comes around the corner and it's the biggest man I've ever seen in my life walking towards me and I'm just like, what? He told me he was tall, but oh my God, I no, no, was not expecting that. Mm. I get out of the car. I'm like trying to reach for the door handle because I'm so nervous I can't find it. So I'm like fidgeting. I'm like, <laughs> I keep staring at him like, oh my God. So I open the door and I get out and I look at him and I go, hey. I'm like, hey. And he's like, hi. And he like, we both start like walking fast towards each other. And then I started running towards him. I jumped up at him. He grabbed me. I wrapped my legs around his waist. So, and then we started kissing. It was like, it was like a scene out of the notebook. It really was. Um, I think that kiss lasted like 30 minutes. That's how it felt. I know it wasn't that long, but he picked me up like I was nothing. It was so cute, romantic. And We stopped talking. I mean, we stopped kissing and he put me down and goes, God, you are tiny. I said, you're huge. <laughs> so he kissed me again. He bent down and kissed me, you know, and then we got, I said, oh, I said, do you mind driving, please? I am, I am shaking. I am so nervous. I just, I can't concentrate to get out of here. He goes, yeah, no problem. I get in the passenger. He gets in the driver's seat. I'm just like staring at him. And let me tell you how I fell in love with him over the phone. This was the most amazing man, person I've, I've ever I like talked to in my life. He was so interesting, so intelligent. Um, he loved poetry, or he, he still does. He loves poetry. We would talk on the phone for hours and we'd fall asleep to him playing Mozart in the background. Um, yeah, we'd fall asleep on the phone and he's like, don't hang up. Let's just, let's just sleep together. Even though we can't see each other, let's sleep together. And I was like, what? Oh my God, this guy's so romantic. Oh. So we would literally sleep together on the phone, not hang up, just have the phone, you know, by our heads. I'd fall asleep like that. And he'd be playing Mozart in the background. And just the things, I talked to him for two months. He never disrespected me he never took, brought up sexual things he never asked me sexual inappropriate questions he never sent me you, you know nasty pictures nothing he was just a gentleman and he treated me like the way a woman should be treated and i didn't know how to deal with that because i've never had that before in my life i didn't i was you know it took me like like a whirlwind i was just like this, i need a lifeline here i don't know how to deal with this but it was one of the best feelings in the world. It really is. Like when you have someone that treats you right. And if you've never had that before, you, you don't know that you're missing it. So that's what my situation was. But so, yeah, I absolutely fell in love with him before I even met him. And the way he would care about me and ask about me, it was just... Unbelievable. Mm. So yeah, I said it first. <laughs> so we finally got to, we're going to go to his mother's house because that's where he obviously he was going to stay. Um, <clears throat> he invited me in. I thought he was just, you know, gonna be dropped off because it was like, I think it was like 12.30 at night. And I was getting ready just to drop him off and, you know, I'll see you tomorrow kind of thing. But I was like, why don't you come in? You know, let, we can go have a couple more beers or something, or a couple beers. 
And I was like, okay. <laughs> we got out. We went to his mom's house. Of course, she was already in bed. We went to the backyard. They have a beautiful deck with a pool and a hot tub. And, you know, it was just beautiful. Mm. So we get out there and we start, you know, popping open a couple beers and we're talking and kissing, you know. I was in his lap and <clears throat> then <laughs> he kept offering me beers and I'm thinking, I got to drive home. But then I was also thinking, well, maybe he doesn't want me to go home. So I accepted him. You know, I was like, I kept drinking him, but I wasn't sure on what he wanted me to do at that point, you know, after like the fourth or I think it was the third or fourth beer after that. I was like, no, there's no way I can't drive. I'm gonna have to sleep on the couch then or wherever. I'll sleep in a guest room or something. Well, we were so in love with each other at this point that um, he's like, no, you're not driving home. Obviously we both know that. He goes, um, I can make you a bed on the couch or you can take a guest room. And I was like, I don't want either of those. <laughs> and he looked at me and he was like, do you want to come to bed with me then? I said, yeah. He goes, he grabs me by the hand. He goes, well, come with me. It was so, ugh. And we laid in the bed and he just held me. He just held me. And I was just like, this is what love is. This is what, this is how a woman should be treated, you know? And he was just, you know, oh my God, I can't tell you. I can't, I can't even explain to you the feeling. But, and of course, before I even closed our eyes and actually went to bed, yes, we got intimate together for the first time. The first time, the first actually time we met as adults. Yeah, we did. So the next morning I woke up. This is the funny part. The story is almost over, guys, because this video is almost an hour long already. But I woke up the next morning after an amazing, amazing night with him. Um, I woke up and I looked around and I was totally by myself in this bed. And I was like, what? Mm -mm. I sat up in that bed. I was so pissed off. I said that motherfucker, excuse my language, I didn't, I said that, I said that piece of shit, I said, are you kidding me right now? I was singing this in my head, I wasn't talking out loud, but <clears throat> I thought he dipped, I thought he got up and left, I thought he was like, okay, you know, that's all I wanted, bye, I really did, because that's what I was used to in the past, that's, what, that's how I've always been treated, if it wasn't me doing it to them, it was them doing it to me, so I didn't know any better. So I woke up and I was just furious. I was like, this is what I get for giving my heart to somebody again. I said, I'm done with this. I was, I was so pissed. I got up, I went to the bathroom. I'm like trying to clean up, you know. I was like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm getting in my car. I'm never talking to this freaking dumbass again. So As soon as I was about to open the bathroom door and like storm out and get my car and leave and tell everybody to kiss my ass there, he, as soon as I opened the bathroom door, he's standing there and he has a cup of coffee in his hands. And he goes, I got this for you. I made it for you. I thought you would like some coffee. And I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I wanted to cry because I felt so bad that I thought that, you know, that he would do that. But like I said, that's that's what my life was in the past. So I was like, I would love coffee. He goes, how did you sleep? Are you, are you okay? Do you feel okay? You need some aspirin or something, whatever. Mm. Mm. I'm like, no, I'm good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm getting so full. Can't eat anymore. Mm. 
So he's like, well, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Do you want to come out in the backyard with me? I said, yeah, of course. So he went in the backyard by the pool. He was smoking. I was drinking my coffee. Um, he put his hand on my leg and he grabbed my hand. And he was just holding it and he was just like caressing it. And I was like, oh my God. So I scooted closer to him. I put my head on his shoulder and I just hugged his arm. And I said, I've never been treated like a woman before. I've never been treated this way. I said, I'm sorry if I seem awkward or weird, but I don't know how to react to it. And he goes, well, it's exactly what you are. You're a wonderful woman and a wonderful mother. Oh, I don't want to cry, but it's bringing me back. <clears throat> and he said, you deserve to be treated as such. Huh. Okay. I got. I seriously got to wrap this up. So, yeah. He stayed for two weeks for that 4th of July. And then he had to go back home. And that was the summer we fell in love under the stars. Um, we were together. We were never apart day in and day out for the whole two weeks. Just madly in love with each other. And I've never experienced love like that ever. And it just... I think it was three months went by and we, we still, you know, it was long distance. He was in South Carolina. I was in Fort Worth. And um, I said, I can't do this. I said, I can't be without you. I have to be with you. I said, I, said, I cry at night because I, I can't. Oh, God, it was so horrible. <laughs> being with true love, being, being, you know, being treated that way and making, I can't even talk, but <clears throat> experiencing that that feeling and knowing that someone actually loves you and you know oh my god so we made plans that I me and the kids would pick up pack up and move to South Carolina and be with him because we could not be without each other for another second see I'm starting to get emotional because thinking about how true love makes you feel and it's just amazing Whew. so um yeah I packed up me and the kids. We moved to South Carolina and we got a, a big rental together and um, we lived there for um, a month. And then after that, we went to Savannah, Georgia. He asked me to marry him and we went to Savannah, Georgia. We had to do it quick in a hurry because we didn't have a big wedding or anything like that. It was Justice of the Peace. Um, in downtown beautiful Savannah at a coffee shop. It was so romantic, I can't even tell you. I see if a bitch is all thirsty. And yeah, we got married right there in a coffee shop in Savannah. And um, that was it, we were married. And then we lived six more months. Oh no, we lived a year there. And then six more, we lived at, for a year and a half, we lived in um, Savannah. I mean, oh my God, South Carolina. And then he got stationed to El Paso. So we were there for a year and a half, and then we came to El Paso, and that's where we are today. And we've been here for three years. So um, <clears throat> that summer we fell in love underneath the stars was whew, so magical. It was so, and that's the kind of love I have for him today. Still today, I do. And it's just, we're crazy about each other. And once you find love like that, you there's nothing else in the world that matters to you. There's not, there's not. It's, it's pretty remarkable. It's a um, remarkable, amazing feeling and thing to have true love and to be treated the way you should. So I can go on and on and on. I mean, there's so much more to tell, but my God. It's an hour long now. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta get off. Thank you guys so much. You guys are probably not even there anymore. <laughs> you guys probably already clicked off. I understand. I, I get it. But yeah, here's a sauce I never tried. I'm so mad. I just kept talking. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna go wrap this up for my family. If they don't want it, it's going in the fridge for tomorrow. 
I love you guys. Thank you for so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the story time and I hope you enjoyed this delicious food and the cooking portion. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you all. Stay safe, stay blessed, take care wherever you're at in the world. Okay, bye.